Well, it is a beautiful, cold morning at the castle. It's a whopping 20 degrees. It's really not the best time of year to shingle. That's what we gotta get done, so. Hopefully we'll get some more roof on today. Let's go check it out. Well, as I'm sure you guys saw in the last video, Ryan and Braden knocked out this shingling over here on what I call the upriver side of the castle. River flows that way. Eric and I are here today and we're gonna try to get the opposite side, the downriver side roof shingled today. And if we're lucky, we'll get the downriver side and the top one. But it's pretty cold. So we're gonna have to be careful with these shingles. Again, it's not the greatest time of year to um, be shingling, but we gotta get this thing under roof so it's completely dried in. And we can get our flashing on and get our siding on those walls. And at that point in time, I'm not worried about any coverings on the ICF. I can get those things ordered, but I'm not worried about covering the ICF because there won't be any leak pads there. So let's get up here and get some roofing on. All right, the first thing we got to put on is drip edge. What the purpose of drip edge is, is just as it sounds, when there's a drip on the edge, this protects it. So we got to get this flush with this edge, get it nailed down, maybe not all the way across, but get a piece on top here so that we can start in this corner with our shingles run across the roof and we can add drip edge, we can add starter, we can add shingles, all in series so that we're not going back and forth and back and forth is my hope. So let's see, see how this goes.
we've made it all the way down and over with our drip edge we've got our starters on and we have four rows of shingles i'm sure you noticed we had a slow start over there these are three tab dimensionals so you can see that you've got a three tab and a three tab on the outside edges and then the next shingle you have you have a three tab and a three tab in the center so you've got to stagger those properly to where you're always ending up with a three tab in between your other three tabs so it's an interesting layout uh what have we had waste so far maybe one third yeah i think is the only waste we've had and we're going to end up with a little bit of waste here but honestly not too bad by the time we cut that one we'll end up with a starter for that side as well but i wanted to chat with you for a minute about starter strip there's a couple of different options you've got this option here which is a short piece of those long pieces you see right there you can see the tar strip is here in the middle and that's not my preferred but the shingle supplier this is the type of starter they had this is the type of starter that i prefer and it's a pill and stick basically and what i like about it is it has the tar strip real close to the edge you can see when i line these two up here that's a really big difference probably pushing six inches further off the edge and that one was already an inch so i'd say that's seven inches off the edge and that's an inch off the edge i prefer this stuff but the supplier didn't have this stuff so we had to use this type of starter and the reason i like that roll product is you can start on one end roll it across and take off and go up to the top so i am going to use this roll starter i've got one more full roll but it wasn't enough to do it all i'm going to use this roll starter up the edge because we have a lot of high winds that come from this direction which another point to make you can see our drip edge is overlapped here if our overlap would have been the other way meaning this piece here was underneath that piece there prevailing winds coming from this direction would have blew water up in there so we have a two inch overlap under this piece so prevailing winds coming from here will push it across that seam and ensure that there's no leak path there and on that corner we also kept that full piece cut it at an angle rolled it around and made sure that this side was on top of this bottom that way as we all know poop rolls downhill right so we got to make sure that that watershed is downhill but we're out of shingles we've got plenty of starters we'll probably actually kick those starters out and bring the roll product back up and we'll finish out these four rows and then we'll bump up with the man lift and get another four rows and i'd say we're a third right now so two-thirds to go
We're down to the nitty gritty now. That went pretty well. Once we got our pattern figured out. I was doing other things when Braden and Ryan were roofing, so I wasn't involved in their pattern making. And yes, I put too many nails in these, but I got their marks and add a couple of extra since this is the almost guaranteed windy side. Getting tight. Okay, one right there. <coughs> Eric, once you get that one cut, I'll get you a dimension. Cause you gotta rip it also. You got my tape measure since you he cut his tape measure with the razor knife so it's no longer any good so it needs to be from the bottom up 11 and a half inches 11 and a half and that would be 23 three and a half inches over. Bottom up, 11 and a half, 23 and a half inch over. Make sense? We're gonna get this cut, we'll be right back. All right, we got our notch piece cut. Slider up in here. is the oh, ripped pieces. And some of you might ask, well, why'd you do it like that? Because it'll have flashing on it, just like that, right there. So we rip the top edge off. We still nail it on the nail line and then flashing will come down the wall and over top of that and run at least to that flat spot, maybe even further. Let's get these last few pieces on. I'm ready to have the last few pieces on. Then I gotta go up there and do that one. There you have it, this roof is on. We will flash it before we side it, as mentioned just a second ago. And I've got one hole I need to spray some foam in to seal that off to make sure I don't have a path for my heat to escape. But at this point, we're gonna go up to the top. I'm gonna put the drip edge on, start shingling, shingling that, and maybe if I'm lucky enough, I'll have that done by the end of the maybe. day. Let's see what happens.
All right, I gotta own up to a mistake. I'm stupid. I've never used bundle starter before. I've always used roll starter or turn three tabs up upside down like the old school guys did it. These new starters, hand me one of those. If you actually pay attention to what you have, you flip it over on the backside, there's a perf line. So you take that, fold it, fold it, and guess what? Now you're not six inches up off the edge. You're an inch up off the edge, and you actually have two pieces. So that entire roof down there has starter strip, but it's not really installed correctly. I think it's going to be fine. And if all else fails, I can run some blackjack right along that bottom edge to make sure it sticks. So, yeah, I messed up. This is the right way. Do not follow my instructions earlier and or my complaint. I'll leave it in the video. I won't take it out. But here we are. Made a mistake and we figured it out. Now we're doing it right. Yep. Let's keep going.
Well, we got her halfway, Eric. Yep. And maybe a little more than half. We've got about 10 more feet to go. And we ran out of uh, purchased drip edge, but I have a little bit left right down there. So next time we come back, we'll put that drip edge on because that'll be a flashed area, that uh, step down you see there. And we'll shingle the rest of this and shingle that top roof and get it tucked up underneath of that roof. But all of this has ice and snow on it. So if we get ice and snow, we're still protected. I would really like to have a piece of drip edge on there before that happens. But if not, I still think we'll be all right. So that's today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell. All that fun stuff that everybody's supposed to do. And yes, everybody, this is the top of the top of the top.